Are you hoping to become a sophisticated stock investor, but you're still looking for guidance on how to find and pick the best stocks? If so, today I'll break down how to value a company's stock, hint, it's going to be Apple, while showing you how to screen for stocks generally, all using our simple and free TIP finance tool. Hi, I'm Sean, and this channel is all about the principles of investing. From stock tips to iconic billionaires, the best strategies, and our favorite tools, the Investors Podcast has everything you need to know. So let's get started. All right, so this is the TIP Finance screening tool. And for me, this is the best way to find new stocks to watch. To play it safe, I'll show you how to find the biggest and most profitable companies here, rather than more risky ones that are likely to be bad bets. So I'll just click over here into the market capitalization category and select large cap. Next, I can take a look at EBIT, which stands for earnings before interest and taxes. Basically, this is a rough approximation of how much the company's core earnings produce. So to find companies with greater operational earnings, I'll just slide this scale a bit to the right. Okay. Now I've got a good looking list of large and profitable stocks, but still a little too large to manage. Let's try narrowing the focus down to a specific sector. Since tech companies have been really beaten up this year, I'm gonna take a look for value in this space. I'll just clear my selections here and then select technology from the dropdown. Let's narrowly define the list a bit, but we can definitely get it down even further. Let's remove all companies with negative momentum. In other words, they're in a negative trend and trying to buy them now might be like trying to catch a falling knife. So I'll just click for only stocks with positive momentum. Now we have a really strong list of companies to explore. Since Apple recently came out with a new iPhone, let's investigate their prospects first. With Apple's profile up, the first thing you'll notice is an overview of its key metrics. You can see the 52 week highs and lows for its stock price, which gives you a feel for where it's currently trading. You can also see some valuation ratios like price to earnings, price to book, price to sales, and price to free cash flow, along with an overview of the stock's volatility, trading volume, and momentum stock which is the price it would need to hit for its positive momentum to flip to negative. You can also see recent activity amongst legendary investors who invest in the stock. You'll notice that over 40% of Warren Buffett's portfolio is in Apple and he's recently added more. This is a pretty strong endorsement for the stock. Just below this, we can see the stock's price chart and play around with the time period to see how it changes over time. There's also an option to see Apple's momentum chart, which will be quite useful to know. It appears that for most of the past few years, the stock has had positive momentum. For more short-term traders, this is a sign that they could profitably buy into the stock and hold it for as long as the momentum indicators stay green. Once it flips, it's usually time to get out of the position. Let's get into the bread and butter of intrinsic value now though. Beneath the price chart, we can see an assortment of standardized financials and ratios for Apple. I typically take a quick look through the three financial statements, which are the income statement, balance sheet, and statement of cash flows to see how things look. There's also a financials overview though that gives a nice summary. Revenues have clearly been growing consistently and gross margins, which is a measure of profitability and shows net sales minus cost of goods sold is well over 40% for the last 12 months. Both free cash flows and net income appear to be growing quite strongly as well. If we jump down to the key ratios, we can see that how Apple's performance has evolved over time. The return on assets has doubled in recent years and its net margins have been consistently over 20% since 2012, 
We could also see other things like revenue and income growth, free cash flows as a percentage of sales, financial health, and its average valuation relative to its five year and 10 year average price to earnings, Apple stock looks a little expensive. So it's not so far from its three year average. Let's see if we can value things ourselves. To do this, let's scroll back up to the intrinsic value calculator here based on the current market price and the number of shares outstanding, as well as our desired rate of return, we can use future growth to help discern our price target for Apple. At the top here, we can make growth predictions based on probabilities. At the upper bound, we'll want to note our most optimistic growth rate assumptions for free cash flows. Let's say 10% per year over the next decade with a 30% likelihood of this happening. Our most likely estimation at a 40% probability goes in the next box where we have the company growing slightly faster than the average historical rate for the economy, which may be a reasonable growth rate for a successful company over a several year period like Apple. And then to be conservative, we can add a scenario where Apple's earnings essentially stay flat for the next few years. This would be the 0% growth probability. With these assumptions entered, we can see our expected rate of return at 3.56%. So this is nothing to write home about by buying the stock today. Let's say we have the same growth assumptions for the company, but we want to know what price we'd have to buy it to achieve a 6% return. Let's see. By inputting 6% into the expected rate of return, we can see that we'd need to buy Apple stock at around $107. This is considerably lower than its current price, but should there be a big sell-off, we can watch this price target and buy shares as it approaches that level. How will we know when Apple stock gets close to our intrinsic value target? Well, we can go on over to the portfolio section and we'll wanna add Apple to our watch list. I've already done this here. And then we can just scroll down to the price notifications and we'll wanna add Apple. I'll start by inputting the company ticker and the buying price of $107. If Apple stock hits this price, I'll get an email notification and then I can make sure I buy as many shares as I'd like to. If I do get the chance to buy, I can add my position to my portfolio to track my returns. And I just do so here by clicking add to portfolio. By doing so, I could select the number of shares that I've purchased, the date and the price of those shares purchased, and my portfolio will automatically update and track those changes for me. As a bonus, the next time we're looking for stock ideas, instead of perusing the screener, we can also look here over our favorite investors portfolios, which help you by staying up to date on what they're doing. To see the great Warren Buffett's holdings, we can simply just click here and look over his favorite stocks. I love doing this for many of the investors we track on our site. It's always fun to compare who holds what and use that as the basis of conducting my own stock research. Of course, I don't blindly copy them, but why not mimic the best or at least look to them for some inspiration? As a little bonus, I wanna quickly highlight some other awesome features on the platform here. So let's dive into the international section. This is honestly one of the coolest parts of TIP Finance. We can go in here and look at data for these 25 major economies. For each country, there's a breakdown of the lowest fee ETF you can use to invest there, the CAPE ratio, which is the cyclically adjusted price to earnings ratio based on average inflation adjusted earnings from the past 10 years. Based on this, it appears that Turkey is actually the cheapest place to invest. 
I've been really interested in stocks from the UK though, so let's see what's going on there. By clicking more info, I can see how the country's signature stock index has performed over time. The country's total equity market capitalization relative to its national income, which is an indicator of whether stocks there are overvalued, long-term interest rates, dividend yields, and sample sector weightings. There's also a whole other market section that we've recently added. Here, you can see how factors like value, growth, and large cap and small cap are performing, sector breakdowns, and you can also see market prices for commodities like gold, silver, oil, and Bitcoin. So here are the factors. I'll just quickly scroll through. Then as I showed, there are the various sectors. And lastly, you won't wanna miss the commodity prices. That's it for this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd really encourage you to check out TIP Finance for yourself. If you do, you can sign up for free below and for full access, use our discount code intrinsicvalue15 for 15% off all plans. Please also like, subscribe, and share your comments below if you liked my breakdown of Apple stock and the TIP Finance platform. We love hearing your thoughts, so tell us what are your biggest takeaways from this valuation? Do you believe Apple stock is worth buying? Just a reminder, nothing in this video is financial advice, and I'd encourage you to do your own research before making any investment decisions. And don't miss our mini series on the ultimate guide to investing in stocks, where we teach you more about the fundamentals of investing, optimizing your returns, planning for retirement, and so much more. See you all next time. An active versus passive investing styles. Getting started is often the hardest part in investing as stocks may invoke flashy Wall Street depictions that seem daunting. However, with this series, you'll learn what's necessary to not just beat the pros, but how to build a better financial future.